never realized how far it is from the back up to here. A little bit out of wind. But the first part of the service is done. I don't think I got any black splotches on any major white surfaces or clothing. I'm good, I hope. So, Ash Wednesday. Tonight we begin our 40 day journey toward Easter with the day of fasting and repentance. Marking our foreheads as we have already done with dust, we acknowledge that we die and we return to the earth. And at the same time, the dust traces the life-living cross indelibly marked on our foreheads at our baptism. And while we journey through Lent to return to God, we have already been reconciled to God through Christ. We humbly pray for God to make our hearts clean while we rejoice that now is the day of salvation. So returning to our baptismal call, we more intentionally bear the fruits of mercy and justice in the world. Our service begins with Psalm 51, words that are probably just almost burned onto our hearts already. Have mercy on me, O God, according to the stead your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we will sing, Lamb of God.
our first reading for tonight comes from Joel, the second chapter. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and of gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples? Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Let us stand for the gospel reading. The gospel for this evening comes from Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they might be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they've already received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room. Shut the door and then pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, don't look dismal like the hypocrites. They disfigure their faces just to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret 
will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. For neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace to you in peace from God our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Remember that wording? That goes back a long time. That goes back to, I don't know what this church was, but it goes back to what I called the SBH, the Red Hymnal. That was a, <laughs> a really long time ago. It was sung right after the offertory when we didn't have communion. And I fell in love with this song. I don't know if it was the melody, maybe it was the harmony, but what I remember is the strength this song brought to me as an eight-year-old. As an eight-year-old, I heard joy. I heard free. In those youthful ears of mine, I heard that at the end of all of my loss, all of my grandparents by the age of eight were gone and I had lost a couple almost right together. I was grieving. And I needed to know that God was there to bring me joy and that in the end there would be freedom for me from my grief. Okay, I heard that wrong, but I believe the Holy Spirit gave me the power to hear what I needed to hear at that time. Since then, of course, I know that this psalm is a penitential psalm, that great big word that nobody knows about, right? And yet, this is a wonderful psalm to be said by individuals yet today. Yes, it can be done as a group like we did in our church year after year after year. But this psalm says, create in me a clean heart, O God. It doesn't say create in us. It says create in me. Now this psalm is attributed to King David. Nathan has come up to him and said, um, Bathsheba, and then killing her husband, Uriah? Not good, David. And David is just beside himself. He hears the words. In verse 4 of this psalm, we hear the words, I have sinned. I think those are good words to hear throughout that entire psalm. I have sinned. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Jesus prayer. I have sinned. Kyrie eleison. Help me, O oh God. David is filled with anxiety. I remember reading Luther's response to this psalm, and he says, whoever called this a penitential psalm really knew what he was doing. And then there's that penitential season. It's a season that lasts 46 days in length, but Lent is only 40 days. And you might be wondering, well, how does that work? Sundays are never anything 
by the mini Easter. They are a festival day every day of the year, no matter what. Sundays are always festival days, and we need those festival days, especially during this time of Lent. During this time of Lent, when we do all of the practices of Lent, I need the grace of God. I need the mercy from God. I need the forgiveness, grace, mercy. And then finally at the end, I need the joy that I heard as a child. And I need to be freed. And don't we all, don't we all, we, it's not just me, we have all sinned. But there are also so many other things that are happening in our lives. Just a lot of stuff. We try to be good. Sometimes we might be good. Sometimes we convince ourselves that we're good, and then I think it's time to be scared, maybe. But we mess up. Things happen. Life gets to be hard. Then I'm going to go back to Luther one more time. Luther once wrote this. God does not save people who are only fictitious sinners. Be a sinner and sin boldly. But believe and rejoice in Christ even more boldly. For he is victorious over sin death, and the world. As long as we are in this world, we will sin. This life is not a dwelling place for the righteous, but as Peter says, we look for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. It is enough that by the riches of God's glory, we have come to know the Lamb who takes away all of the sin of the world. And isn't that wonderful and it's during this time of Lent that we hear those words and we reflect on sins sinfulness grief despair all of these things but we have a Holy Spirit that is good at showing us how our lives really are. It's not a coincidence that all of a sudden we see our sins one day, that we see the grief that we are going through, the despair that we're going through, the pains we are going through. That is the work of the Holy Spirit, opening us up to see all of that for one reason. The guy who died on that cross. The Holy Spirit guides us to that cross. Because we need a Savior. We need somebody to travel along with us so we're not alone. We need a, tra a traveler with us that says, I'm merciful. And we can do this together. We can do this together. So as you go through these 40 days of Lent. Keep Psalm 41, 51 in your mind, especially these words. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. Yes, free is a modifier of spirit. But in our childish minds, hear the words of God saying, joy will be here for you. Joy is already here for you. 
and then be free of whatever is binding you at this moment. Maybe it's sin, maybe it's grief, maybe it's something else. But may you be free. May the Holy Spirit point you to the Christ who says to you and to me, bind yourself to me, yoke yourself to me. And then I will set you free. Say it when you climb into bed. And then when you do that, turn over, go to sleep, good night, amen. in Christ. Today, with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life. And our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and our neighbors. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent. Self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love. Strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament, let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and his resurrection. Let us confess our sin now in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, 
by our own most grievous fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us. Our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors and our prejudice and contempt toward those who are different from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Amen. In times of great sorrow and heartache, God's people of old would wear their grief. With sackcloth and ashes, their outward form reflected the reality of their hearts. Brokenness cannot be hidden away. Tonight, we admit the brokenness of our hearts as we wear the sign of brokenness, ashes. Our brokenness cannot be hidden away. Yet we know that brokenness is only part of the story. There's more. The ashes trace the shape of the cross. The cross that removes our sin, heals our brokenness, and makes us whole. Our brokenness is not forever. We are restored in the cross. And now relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, you call your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. O oh God, you created the earth and all its habitants, and you declare that it is good. Protect mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all that you have made. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. O oh God, you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well-being of all people and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God. You are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow. 
and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, spirit, and support caregivers who attend to all who are in their need. Help us, O oh God. O oh God, your disciple John, in his epistle, said, You are love. And you call us to love one another. Accompany us with your grace, those journeying towards baptism, and call us to repentance as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God, you are our life. You are our salvation. We give you thanks for the righteous who have died in faith. Inspire us by their example to proclaim your steadfast love to all. Hear us, O oh God. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And I will let you share that peace however you are comfortable sharing peace. At this time, we usually take the offering, but we won't be tonight. I will say an offertory prayer after I'm done here, but the offering will be taken at the back of the church as you leave tonight. So when you leave, you can have your offerings ready and just put them in the plate. Also, communion tonight. You have these little packets in front of you, I hope. If you've not done this before, these are tricky. They're hard to get the cover off. If you watched the wonderful video that Gwen and I did a long time ago, you can see that it was tricky. But hey, after we get through all of the uh, words of institution, I'm sorry, and the Lord's Prayer, then I will tell you the body of Christ given for you, and then you eat in the blood of Christ. So there we are. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace, with words of life. Bless us, and these your gifts, which we received from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night to which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it. And then he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he poured it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you. And it is shed for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may our body, 
Christ's body and blood, strengthen and preserve you unto his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days, through the gift of bread and wine. You have nourished us with your very self. Be with us. Renew us in the gift of our baptisms that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those who are in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance, his peace, his favor upon you and give you his joy. In the name of the Father and of the Son, of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.